In this video, you're gonna learn some of the best prospecting business development strategies you can use to find new clients and close more deals. Make sure you watch until the end because we're gonna cover everything from how to sell into small, medium businesses all the way to enterprise companies. What's going on everybody? It's Patrick Dang here. Now, before we get started, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, turn on notifications if you wanna see more business development videos like this. And so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So now the first step of business development prospecting is how exactly can you target small, medium businesses, right? So I know a lot of you guys might be targeting, let's say like local gyms, restaurants, retail stores, and basically mom and pop shops. How do exactly do you get your foot in the door with people like this? And so for this type of strategy, when you're selling into small, medium businesses, you gotta understand it's all about velocity, right? You don't wanna spend too much time on one person because, you know, if you're going for, let's say, a local gym, you know, if somebody says, no, you gotta move on to the next local gym, right? If you spend too much time on one person, you know, it may not be worth it. And so that's why you gotta build big list and you have to do a lot of transactions in order to make this business development process and strategy worth it. So to give you an example, I'm gonna pretend I am working at, uh, as a business development person, working at Greenbits. And for those of you who may not be familiar, Greenbits is basically a point of sale system for dispensaries. And when I say dispensaries, I'm talking about weed, right? So wherever weed is sold legally, uh, basically Greenbit is a software and they sell it directly into the retail stores of dispensaries uh, for them to handle all their retail sales, uh, to understand their data of who's buying, why they're buying, and basically it's software to manage the back end process of a physical retail store. And it's to also to process transactions. So if you're not really familiar with this type of business, it's very similar to Square, right? So Square essentially is like, kind of like the same thing. They have a point of sale system where if you want to pay by credit card or you know Visa, MasterCard, you connect it to your iPad, you swipe the card, and then it takes in your money, passes through the software, then goes to your bank account, and you get all the information about the customer, right? So Square is kind of for everybody, meaning it could be a flower shop, pizza shop, gym, whatever, but uh, Greenbits is specifically for dispensaries, all right? So if I was working here and it was my job to, let's say, sign up as many dispensaries as I can because there's a boom in the weed market and you know weed is becoming uh, more and more legalized in different states in California and other states in America, well, what I would do is I would go to a state, let's say like, uh, or go start with a city like San Francisco, and you could just type literally weed or weed dispensary within Yelp, right? So you can use any type of directory. Today example, today's example, we're gonna use Yelp. So for Yelp, essentially I would be like, all right, so let's make a big list of all the weed dispensaries in San Francisco. I would go, you know, this guy, this guy, uh, Urbana, the Green Cross, and basically I would take all these people and all their information and I would add it to, let's say an Excel list, or I would add it to my CRM. And that's customer relationship management software. That's just where, you know, it's basically a fancy Excel sheet but use my software, right? So I'll go on their Yelp page and I'll see like, all right, cool. Like we got, there's a real dispensary, they got a real retail store um, and they're probably making money. And so my job as someone who works at, again, uh, Greenbits is to say, okay, are they using, you know, what software are these guys using to run their business? You know, are they using any point of sale software? Are they only cash? Are they using something that is more rudimentary and not very complex and maybe it sucks? And you know, if I could identify those pain points, you know, I would basically make a big list of all the dispensaries in, let's say San Francisco, and I would try to identify a pain. You know, if they're only doing cash, then, you know, let's get them using, you know, Visa and MasterCard, right? That's one specific pain point you might go for. Um, and then what you would do from there is you would find the email of this person, right? And so what you wanna do is you wanna go to the website, which is on Yelp, right? You also have their phone number. Go to a website and you wanna see, you know, if who can you contact here, right? Uh, so go to the about page and, all right, so basically when you go to someone's about page, you can either cold call them, right? If you're good at cold calling, you know, put that on. Uh, you can send information to the info uh, at, you know, business.com or you can message them on Instagram. So I actually recommend, you know, sending them a cold email and cold calling, right? You can do a variation of both. So you send them an email first and saying who you are, what pa challenges they probably have and see whether or not they wanna talk on the phone. And then if they don't respond to that, you can, you know, have a variation of cold email. Next day, 
cold call and then you know try to generate a conversation with the cold call if they don't respond to that and then a couple days later you follow up with the second email and you kind of use this variation of multiple touches and when you're sending an email to let's say info at uh, company name.com a lot of times the owner is going to look at it because you got to understand that these are going to be small medium businesses so a mom and pop shop right so maybe they only have one business email for the entire company and that's what people can reach out to and so you know when you're sending it to info at company.com a lot of times the owner is going to look at it and so that's you know you're getting the eyeballs on your email and if they're interested they're going to take your meeting so like i was saying before if you're selling this software um all you gotta do make a big list of all the people who are you know into this right and from there you can expand to different cities first and then different states and then eventually you have a list of every single dispensary in north america and you know if you can't sell it to them then you're not going to sell to anybody right so now that you understand, let's say, small and medium businesses and how to use directories to find these companies, next type of business development prospecting is to go more up market and go for more enterprise companies, right? So these are companies that are gonna be really huge and you know you don't have to sign up a thousand of these guys to make a big difference in your business. If you sign up, let's say, five a year, that might be a complete game changer for your business. All right, so for example, Let's say you're working at Square, right? Which is the company we talked about before. They got a point of sale system and can be used for many type of businesses, not just weed dispensaries, right? So you can either go for all the local mom and pop shops, which they do do, and you can also have a dedicated team focused on enterprise, going for the big deals, like going for someone like a Starbucks, um, for example, right? Um, so, you know, so one interesting use case that I found is that, you know, Square actually did a business development deal with Postmates, and Postmates is basically, uh, if you don't know what it is, it's like Uber for food delivery, right? You just kind of go on the app and say, okay, I want to order some Chinese food and then deliver it to my house. And then the restaurant will basically get the order and make the food. And then someone in Postmates who is like a freelancer will pick up the food and drive to your house. You can also order, you know, I guess random stuff like beer, uh, medicine, groceries. So basically any, a lot of different items you can use Postmates with, right? So why would Square do a business development deal with Postmates. So basically this is how it works, right? You have a restaurant, for example, over here, let's say it's a Chinese restaurant. And let's say the Chinese restaurant is using Square as a point of sale system. Now Square can connect directly to Postmates so that when the consumer on this side is on their phone, on the Postmates app, and they order something on Postmates, then that connects directly with Square and Square directly gives the order to the Chinese restaurant saying, hey, this guy ordered some noodles using Postmates and you have to make it and give it to us another person who's gonna drive by and he's gonna pick up the food, right? So actually, it might sound simple, but actually there's it's very complicated process because there's like basically like four steps from the person who ordered the app, right? Who wants the food to actually processing it through all the software to eventually get to the Chinese restaurant. Postmates, now Square wants to do a deal with Postmates because you know if all the restaurants are already using Square and the restaurants want to expand their business, especially during this time where there's social distancing and maybe you know people can't physically come to the restaurant, well, it makes it a lot easier for these restaurants to be like, hey, you know, we should just sell on Postmates, right? Because we're not getting as much customers as we used to. So we might as well just take advantage of, you know, what's going on in the market and sell more. And Square is winning because, you know, every transaction that goes through uh, Postmates and then goes to Square and then goes to the restaurant, they're getting a percentage of the sales. So obviously the more platform Square is on, whether it's Postmates, Uber Eats, or basically any of them, they're making a percentage of the sales. So they're in an advantage position to do these type of big business development deals where they integrate their software directly with another person's platform and they get a percentage of every single sale that goes through their point of sale system. So for this type of enterprise deal, you know, you're not reaching to like thousands of people because there's not a lot of companies that have this type of platform and scale. Instead, you're really focusing on, let's say, a certain type of market that fits specifically in your ideal customer profile. And, you know, if you do, let's say like five deals a year, that might be huge for your company, right? Because, you know, just Postmates alone, you know, how much revenue these Postmates process through their payment processor that goes through Square? I'm guessing it's millions or maybe more. And, you know, Square gets a percentage of that. So, well, you can kind of see the value that is generated here and Square is probably generating multi-millions just from this one deal. So if you're doing any type of enterprise sales, you wanna make a list of the top companies you want to work with. And you don't wanna make sure that you don't just burn through these people because you really want to build a relationship, uh, be respectful when it comes to the cold email, offer more value. It's not just a you know, quick and go kind of thing where you just buy something and bounce. You actually got to build a real relationship over months usually for something like this. And then maybe over years actually, build that relationship, 
continue with the meetings, understand their problem, show them that you can solve the problem, and then over time, you eventually get closer and closer to closing the deal. And once you do close that deal from a prospecting perspective, you just wanna find all the other people similar to that person that you close and say, hey, look, I did this for you know Postmates, I can do it for Uber Eats, I can do it for this guy, I can do it for this guy, and then you kinda just do your prospecting like that. But you gotta take your time, you wanna do it right, because if people you know see you as someone who's just slimy and sleazy and just wants to make money, nobody's gonna work with you, right? But if they can see you're bringing real value, then you got shot. Now the next step of business development prospecting is to refine your prospecting strategy. So whether you are selling to small, medium business like we did in the uh, weed example, or you're selling to, let's say, technology companies and you're connecting with like Postmates, the thing you wanna pay attention to is that whatever you sell or whatever business development deal you do, you need to ask the customer even after the deal is done, why exactly they decided to go with you versus any competitor? What exactly do they like about using your services? You know, what are the things that you can improve? And you wanna understand exactly what the customer is feeling about your products and services in that business development deal. From there, you wanna take all those learnings, right? And you wanna apply it back into your prospecting strategy. So if let's say all the weed shops are saying, yeah, you know, we're using cash before, but you know, we had no way to understand our customer. We have no way to keep track of data of who's buying and creating memory membership sites and all, you know, all these things. And you know you thankfully came and solved all our problems. So now you understand the real problem. You wanna to go to all the other dispensaries or retail stores, whatever, that face a similar problem and you want to solve that same problem if they are experiencing that same problem, right? So when you're doing your cold emails, they're a lot more likely to respond because they're like, oh, this guy gets it, right? Especially if you have your posts on what's going on in the market and what pains people are experiencing. If you can communicate that through a cold email or communicate it through a cold call to actually get the ball rolling to get a real meeting then you know people are more likely to take that meeting and buy your products and services but if you don't refine the process and you're just selling the same thing over and over and you're not understanding why it is that your customers are buying then you're never going to improve your response rates your meeting rates and your closing ratio so that's why it's always important to look at the deals that succeeded and understand why is it that it worked and then apply it into your prospecting strategy on who you should go after. You know, if it works, do more of that. If it doesn't work, do less of that, right? Don't waste your time on prospects that you know, aren't gonna buy, right? Just let it go and go for the ones that do. So refine your process and that's basically how you get better over time. And so with that said, those are gonna be my three business development prospecting strategies that you can apply right away. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you wanna check out my other business development videos, make sure to do that here. And let me know in the comments if you enjoy this video and if you wanna see more examples of modern business development, and I'll be happy to make that for you guys. So with that said, my name is Patrick Dang and I will see you guys in the next one.